have in any way, shape or form slandered you, I apologize in public. If you don't admit you have. Listen, be a man of integrity admit, and listen. Do you admit listen, or do you not admit? Listen, if I have slandered you in any way, shape or form, I am simply saying I apologize. Fair enough. Is that fair enough? Apologies. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Now, it, it was never an intention to apolo- uh, slander anyone. Because if I slander anyone, how can, you bring, how can I bring closer to think about Islam at all? I will drive you away from Islam instead. So my point today now is in the next 10 minutes or so in the discussion that we're going to have is if you really have your, some intellectual barriers or objections, obstacles, bring out your worst troubling ones, uh, three perhaps, then we can discuss. What are the most troubling objections that you, do you have for the ideology of Islam? As you said, ideology. And then we can discuss. Go ahead. Start with your most troubling one. I will bring you one. It's Go ahead. that Islam is not certain. And let me prove it. Because last time I didn't come with the knowledge necessary for this. Have, has anybody here heard about the Scottish philosopher called David Hume? He's a Scottish skeptic that lived in the 18th century in Scotland. Now, Hume was a very intelligent man. He divided all knowledge that we have in three different categories. The first category is relations of ideas. Uh, a triangle in geom- geometry, a triangle can only have three sides. If you have two apples and two oranges, you have four pieces of fruit. Those truths are undoubt- undoubtful, completely, they can't be denied. Because if you deny them, you enter self-contradiction. It's illogical to deny those truths. Now. This is, uh, because I couldn't explain this one properly, examples were given to me because I was saying that nothing is certain. And people would ask me, is one plus one one equal two? If you, is the sky blue? Is the grass green? They ask me those kinds of questions. And we'll come to this one a little bit later. But first I need to speak about the other two examples that he gave. The examples of knowledge. As I said, there are three. The The two others are matters of fact which is something that requires observation and not operation of thought. What does this mean? I see that the grass is, I mean, it's not very light, bright right now, but if it were the day, I would see that the grass right now here is green. It's still green. It's, a, it's an observation. It, it's still green, but you know, now it doesn't look that green because there's less light. And we'll come, to, we'll come to light later. We'll come to light. That's a very good thing for you to say, because I'll come to that later. Now, the grass is green, right? Everybody here can agree to that. Because we see this grass right now here that is green. We need to see it. We need to make certain of it by our eyes. Yes, because grass, when it Tell me it is over. Let me know. So we finish this discussion. Just said nothing is certain. I'll come to that later. Let me first, I'll explain to you Hume's perspective and I'll explain to you how, why I agree with him. And then I'll tell you why this perspective makes what I said uh, more believable that you think. Now, the third uh, kind of knowledge is observed regula- regula- regularities. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, observed regularities. Now, what is an observed regularity? It's a matter of fact. It's composed by many matters of fact, but except it's a, a supposition for the future. It's a prediction. Every time I saw a crow, I saw black crows. That means that it's reasonable to say that all crows are black, even though I never saw all the crows in existence. This is uh, the observed regularity. This means that the observed regularities are the most uncertain of truths. But still, we do believe them, because we need to believe them to survive. If I take a step forward, I believe that I will meet the ground with my foot and I will feel it. Because I took many steps, sorry, bro, uh, many steps behind and I know it. I know it because it's, um, again, it's what it is. Now, these three truths might, might seem completely um, immutable to you guys. The second two ones, we can already see some flaws in them because they might not be completely truthful. The matters of fact depend on our senses. And because our senses are flawed, we might not see things exactly as they are. And that is exactly why I'd like to mention the grass is green argument. Let me just uh, have a little choice here with my... Uh, here we go. And I would like to have a little bit of a speech about color. Now, color... <laughs> what is color? Bro, he's giving you 10 minutes. Here. What is color? Yeah, what when is the term is over, the, the discussion ends. Yeah. You know that. Fair Carry enough. On. You can end Carry the discussion. On. It's your choice. 
uh, what is color? Color is light, and we see different colors because light has different fluctuations. It has different frequencies of the waves that fall upon objects. The, the, the light, it's reflected on objects, and the frequency of the fluctuation shows that is most reflected is absorbed by our retina. Our retina is a small organ inside our eye, and it's composed by two uh, small particles, two, two smaller organs. One of them are rods. Rods perceive the world when there's very little light. That is why when we look at that grass over there, we... Uh, five minutes? Cool, I have enough time. Uh, five, min five minutes. Um, that grass over there, if you look at it, it doesn't look as green as it would when there's light. And if there's almost no light, you will see it as gray or as black or as... Uh, something like that, or as white, if you are of very intense light. Is that true? Do we agree on that? Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, you might not agree for it, but you need to give a reason. So, uh, why does that happen? Because when there's very little light, uh, the colors we see are not perceived. Because when there's very little light, we only perceive that with... with uh, calm down, bro, calm down. Wait for your turn. When there's, when there, calm down, bro. I'm not an atheist, by the way. I'm not an atheist. Calm down, calm down. Don't take my time. Don't take my time. You get extra minutes. Thank you very much. I, uh, that, that's just. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, uh, those uh, small organs that absorb uh, the color, not the colors, but uh, that see the world when there's very little light, are the. Sorry? For the, yes, for the receptors, but they are the, uh, the rods, because they are the rods and the cones. Sure. Now, the rods and the cones, uh, you know, they're called the rods too, because they kind of look like a rod. They're very, very, very small particles. Uh, the rods, they absorb, uh, they see the world when there's very little light. Now, the cones, they are different, because there's three kinds of cones. One of them sees red light, uh, red color, one of them sees blue color, and one of them sees green color. What does this mean? All the colors that we see, the only colors that we see, in fact, are only red, green, and blue. So now you ask me, how can we see the other colors that we see? For example, the light blue, black, like uh, different colors. Now, this is because our eyes can't distinguish between very, very different colors. And thus, when we see, um, when we see kind of mixed together the, um, the rays of red or the rays of green and the rays of blue, I'm going to call them by that name, but there's a reason for it. I'll explain it later. Um, our eyes can't see the difference because our eye kind of mixes them, mixes them together. That is when we mix, uh, when, when the rays of red and blue, for example, are mixed, we see purple. It's not actually purple, but it's how we perceive the world because our eyes see it that way. Because our eyes don't see it exactly the same way that it is if we saw all the colors. The butterflies are the perfect example for this. Because instead of three, they have six kinds of cones in, uh, in their, uh, inside their retinas. Six kinds. That means they see six different colors. They see twice the amount of colors that we see by which we perceive the world. Let me go into a little bit of, um, um, of more detail into this. <laughs> What's the difference between the perception of red, green, and blue? The red, uh, the, we see the red color because the, uh, the trillion oscillations per second of the small waves is 500. 500 trillion oscillations per second, we see red. 550, we see green. 650, we see blue. Those are the only colors that we see in the end. So a person saying that this grass is green and this grass will always be green and this grass, that's the absolute truth that the grass is green, is simply not correct. Because it is our perception. It is the perception by our eyes. How can you possibly explain to a blind man what a color looks like? That's the same thing. If a butter butterfly could reason and could speak and could uh, uh, communicate with humans, it would never be able to explain the color that it sees because it's simply unexplainable. It's something that they call the qualia, which are in fa uh, ineffable, raw, unexplainable feelings. They, they are limited by our language, and some scientists think... Okay, so I've got one minute to respond. The prophet's got... Uh, let him go to 11 minutes. No, 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 no. So I've got one minute to respond to a question that is not even asked. No, up to you, brother. No, no, no. <laughs> 10 minutes was a total. So now... No! Okay, 10 minutes was a total. No, let him finish. Because if you finish it in 10 minutes, then I have no to say, then I have to say, pack up my bags and go home. <laughs> Simple. We've got 11 minutes, so it's not... Yeah, yeah. Is it okay if he responds to... 
No, there won't be no response because he hasn't given me a chance to respond. Remember, remember, the whole discussion was meant to be 10 minutes. The point is, I was told that I was told by Judea who was here, and it wasn't an unbased assumption that the grass is green and it would keep being green. That's because we, uh, this gentleman over here, but uh, you know. I said it looks green. Yeah. From, him, him. from what I see, it looks huh? green. That's all I said. Yeah. No, but that proves yeah. that you can't be certain <laughs> of your <laughs> sense. So I, this example is to well, disprove the second truth. Uh, the second truth made by David Hume. And you know, he already knew that the, tubes, uh, the, se the second and the third truths are very uncertain. The We're second one, now, because our senses are flawed. What because do we don't him? perceive the world exactly as it is. Now, uh, no, the third one, <laughs> they're flawed, exactly. No, but that, that's just my uh, me walking to the whole point. Ask him what you want. Now the, the the third one is observed regularities. If you observe the regularities. What is the point you're trying to get at? Sorry. What is the? I'm not trying to rush you, but your ten minutes is done. But you got one more minute. Fair enough. Extra, extra, extra. But what's your, point? The what's your point? What's the point? What's my point yeah, yeah, to the whole? Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. point is to show people that they can't be certain a hundred percent of anything. Whoa. That okay. is my point. <laughs> now, okay. And to show that, you know what? I am giving you these you know what? examples. Give you even though, even though, even though I said ten minutes, <laughs> I think <laughs> this requires a little bit of response, <laughs> right? Of but then, yeah. Is there anything that you say? Is it okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very interesting question. Brother, brother. Is uncertainty certain? Um, there might wait, 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 be let's something let's certain. I thought, I thought you finished. Because bro, our senses are flawed. That means uncertainty okay, is not that bro, certain. Bro, yeah, Sorry. Yeah, okay. okay, remember what I asked you. Because things are troubling you about Islam in terms of its correctness, in terms of its authenticity, in terms of divine origin, I asked you, give me the worst troublesome, worst troubling um, from Islam in its ideology, that intellectually is an obstacle. You said Islam and its certainty, Islam is not certain. Yes. So you think Islam is not certain because of the reasons you've given from David Hume. So you gave us a nice lecture that you read from the notes that you've made from David Hume and also from science about rods and cones and photoreceptors. Thank you very much. Um, now, <laughs> Thank you. Well done to you. Um, are you certain about any of the things that you said? Of course not. Of course not. Right. So basically, since 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 you're not you're not certain about anything that you said, I can simply leave this to one side and say I'm not interested in your uncertainties. Okay. If you had anything certain to discuss with me to prove that Islam is wrong, then we can talk. Because what you're bringing is I don't know whether it's certain or not. Because that's what you're selling, telling me. You're not certain what you've brought, whether this is in fact an argument. Because I'm, I don't know, I'm not certain. So next time, if you really want to refute Islam, bring something that you're certain of. So I think we leave it there. I think everyone understands that. You brought something which is uncertain. You cannot you disprove. What you, brought? you cannot disprove. said I'm not. He's not. So he's not certain. No, but wait. And what he brings is not certain. You cannot disprove something which you're not even certain of what you think. You cannot disprove something. I mean, you're a person who's intelligent. You should know very well. How can you go about disproving something when what you're disproving with is, I haven't got a clue whether it's certain or not. Okay, nice try. Thank you. Thank you.